good morning everybody already you have heard about me so no introduction is required now this uh, number theory normally we have to start from here but i think i think i have got here around 143 slides of which i think it is required uh, at least one and a half hour is required but since uh, i think you have a class at 10:45 i will have to cut off many things and uh, this gcd idea you already know but i require one thing is that um, maybe that yeah uh, how to write the gcd as a linear combination of uh, other elements you know that is for that we are using euclid's algorithm yeah you can see that um, says if i take 18 and uh, 32 you know that the gcd is 2 gcd is 2 and how to write this uh, 2 as a linear combination of 18 and 32 for that we take uh, the uh, euclidean algorithm like this we take 32 and divide it by 18 and it is uh, one times you know that you will get 18 there and therefore you have uh, a remainder of 14 right now 14 divides 18 14 divides 18 and that is again one times so 14 and you have got 4 as the remainder now 4 divides 14 14 and uh, that is uh, 3 times 12 and 2 is the remainder and that is 2 2 is the gcd now each division we write as an equation all right so 32 is written as 18 times 1 all right plus 14 and then the next division we write 18 as uh, 14 into 1 plus 4 and last one is 14 is written as 14 is written as uh, 4 into 3 plus 2. Then we start with this 2, all right, 2 is 14 minus 4 into 4 into 3 and the previous remainder is 14 here, here it is. So we take that 14, so here, sorry, 14 minus 4 into 3 that 4 I take from the previous equation as 18 minus 14 and then I can write this as 14 into 4 minus 18 into 1 18 into 3 14 into 4 that not 4 yeah 4 okay and then finally I replace that 14 which was the remainder that is 14 times 4 minus 18 times 3 and that 14 is written as that 14 is written as 32 minus 18 32 minus 18 and now if you write that as 13 32 into 4 as you see there minus 18 into 7 so that becomes a linear combination gcd becomes a linear combination of 32 and 18 this is called euclid's algorithm i require it sometimes right so This is about GCD. Then we have the Diophantine equation there. All right. I think you have seen that Diophantine equation. AX plus BY equal to C. Somewhere there. Oh, somewhere here. Okay. And uh, it has a solution, this Diophantine equation, if the GCD of A and B divides C. All right. In particular, if you have x0, y0 as one solution, then you can write all the solutions at the last line that you have it there, x equal to x0 plus b by d times t, y equal to minus y0 minus a by d times t, where t varies over z. Um, okay, so we go to a question of uh, Indian history. I have got many questions there. But I wanted one from our culture, 
that is in uh, 8850 Mahaviracharya. Somebody said that it is Mahaviracharya, but in the books that CH is not seen. So I guess it is Mahaviracharya. So there were 63 equal piles of plantain fruits put together and seven single fruits. They were divided evenly among 23 travelers. What is the number of fruits in each pile? So we take the number of uh, uh, the uh, plantains in each pile as uh, x, all right? X fruits are there in each pile and y number of uh, fruits each traveler has got. Then we have the equation 63x plus 7 equal to 23y. In other words, 63x minus 23y equal to minus 7. That is the Diophantine equation that we have. As you see, the GCD of 63 and 23 is 1 and therefore that 1 divides 7, no problem and therefore there must be a solution to this. All right. So, GCD is 1, therefore there is a solution and the solution using as I said already Euclidean algorithm, you can find the solution or you can by trial and error also you can find the solution. So, minus 44 and 11 as you see you get 1 this is by Euclidean algorithm okay GCD is 1 therefore using Euclidean algorithm you get that and then that is not 44 there you have to make a correction that is not 44 one minute. Now I have a small problem here is uh, I don't know the mark because it is too small the slide there so I can't see the pen where is the pen okay so that is not 44 it must be 4 okay. So after that, you multiply by minus 1 to the entire equation. So, it becomes 63 into plus 4 minus 23 into 11 and right hand side is minus 1. All right? Look at the upper equation that we started with. It was 63x minus 23y equal to minus 7. So, multiply the whole equation by 7 now and you are getting this equation where that 63 into 28, that 28 is x naught and that minus 77 is y naught. So, that x naught y naught is one of the solutions, all right, one solution. And then, then you can find the other solutions using this equation x naught plus b by d times t, b is minus 23, so 28 minus 23 t and y naught mi minus a by d times t that is 20, 77 minus 66 t, 63 t, where t varies over z. You can take any integer and substitute, you can get solutions all right maybe there are many negative solutions which are not real you know a number of uh, fruits cannot be negative so in that sense and therefore when you put t equal to 1 you get 5 and 14 as the solutions number of uh, 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 fruits are 5 in a pile and number of uh, travelers each travel gets 14 of them and uh, when you put t equal to minus 1 you get 51 and 140 and so on you can give all the solutions. There is also a very famous uh, problem of Chinese literature where 100 birds are bought for 100 coins. I think if you see a few years back in your number theory, um, what is that uh, syllabus, old question papers, it was a repeated question. You can see that using the Diophantine equation. Now I am going to a very famous uh, uh, result of very classical result I must say, very famous that is uh, if you give me a composite number, how to verify or in general, how, uh, when you give me a number, how to verify whether it is a composite or a prime number. For that, we have to, we have to find a factor of that number which is less than or equal to root a, less than or equal to root a because otherwise we will be going on verifying whether 2 divides, 3 divides, 5 divides and so on, all the primes we check. But this theorem says that it should be less than or equal to root a enough. Beyond that, it cannot be ha, cannot have a factor. All right. So something like here. Look at this. Now you have to test which of these are primes. Say for 61, you just verify whether 64 is a square. So square root is approximately 8 and less than 8, what are the primes? 2, 3, 5 and 7. Just verify whether these numbers divide. If they don't divide, then no other number can divide it. All right. So similarly, 101. You know that uh, root of 101 is approximately 10. So take the numbers primes which are less than 10. They are again same. 
2, 3, 5 and 7, they don't divide, therefore 101 is a prime. 211, you know that 2, 225 is 15 square, so approximately 15 is the square root and less than 15 which are the primes, the same 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 and 13. You just verify whether they divide, if they don't divide then it's a prime. So this is a technique used. Then we have a theorem. I would like to skip. You have seen if you have seen that because uh, in, in interest is uh, the um, cryptography. Therefore, I wish to skip this. It is the number of primes is infinite theorem. I think people must have done it somewhere or other, right? So you take the this uh, theorem's proof is given by Euclid. You know, it is almost two thousand years back here given the proof of this one. Okay, and these numbers are called Euclidean numbers. What are Euclidean numbers? They are of the type that p dash is there. No, you see that p dash there. It means all primes, including p, let you multiply. That is two, three, five, seven, etc. Up to p, you multiply and add one to that. That is called Euclidean number. There was a thinking that that is a prime. P dash plus one is a prime. There was a thinking, but uh, later on it was found that there are numbers which are non-primes. For example, when you take 13, 13 dash plus 1 is a composite. All right. So, we have here Euclidean number, a huge one, as you see there, p equal to 392,113. Such a huge number when you take, p dash plus 1 is also a very huge number and that is having how many digits? The number cannot be written here. So many digits are there and such a huge number is verified to be a prime. It's a prime. Okay. So, not all are, uh, p dash prime, p, p dash plus one, not all of them are primes, but some of them are primes. So, it's nice to see these uh, some mathematicians. I don't want to, I have brought many of them, but some of them I'll skip. This is Pythagoras, and you know, Pythagoras, uh, uh, I consider the mathematicians in two categories. One is a uh, mathematician who is very stingy, another one is very generous. You don't think of money part of it. I'm saying the people who publish their discoveries, they are generous, they keep on writing, but there are some, uh, some mathematicians who are very stingy. This uh, Pythagoras is an extremely stingy person. He had a school and he had many Pythagoreans. Pythagoreans means those who study there for three years and take an oath to become a member there and then they remain in that school. That school had arithmetic, geometry, uh, astronomy and uh, music, I think. These are the four subjects that lot of discoveries were done and this Pythagoras was very arrogant and he was uh, involved and dominated the uh, politics or uh, the, 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 what is that, government of that place and then the people were very angry with him and Pythagoreans. They, there was a famous revolt in 5001 BC and uh, that time all Pythagoreans were attacked, the school was destroyed and the many Pythagoreans were killed, even Pythagoras was killed. And thereby, uh, whatever the discoveries were done, uh, were not published, except maybe two, three theorems, other things are not known. Then comes the very generous one, that is Euclid. You know, we have many things about him, right? Great mathematician. One thing that I want to say is he has written books, I think 11 books, they are called Elements having different branches. Those books were later converted, uh, translated into other subjects. And then comes this great person because of which I took that Dravantine theorem, another great person. Uh, it is 250 AD. Uh, it's uh, uh, after BC, I mean, the other two were BC ones, Pythagoras 500 and the and Euclid, I think, two, 250 BC and this one is uh, 250 AD. And uh, he also has written books uh, 13 books which are called Arithmetica and they were translated later and uh, he has put a strong foundation for equations to learn algebra. This is the person and then comes, I think Dennis sir has ma made my work a little easy. This person, I am not going to tell anything about him except that he was a child prodigy. At the age of 3, he corrected a mistake in his father's role and uh, in the school also when he was at the age of seven, the school declared that there is nothing in that school to teach him. So he was promoted or things like that. You can read his history, very famous. And the uh, mathematician who has uh, gone into 
I must say all branches of mathematics at that time, also gone into chemistry, physics, everywhere he has gone. You know that Gauss theorem, everywhere he is there. All right. So, and what he has done, congruences, you require an introduction to congruences or you are aware of it. I require congruences. Without that, I cannot go to the uh, cryptography. It is based on congruences. All of you, any first year student is there? First year students, congruences, have you seen? All right. Anyway, we will go through uh, a few things. We say A is congruent to B mod N when N divides A minus B or A and B leave the same remainder. All right. So, 25 is congruent to 13 mod 3. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. How do you decide? 25 minus 13 is 12, which is a multiple of 3. Therefore, yes. Then 48 congruent to 18 mod 4. The other way you can do. Divide 42 by 8. 2 is the remainder. Divide 18 by 4. Again, 2 is the remainder. Remainders are same. Therefore, it is a, they are congruent. Whereas, 28 is not congruent to 14 mod 5. When you divide by 5 to 28, you get 3. When you divide 14 by 5, you get 4 as the remainder. Therefore, they are not congruent. All right. And this I wouldn't like to say, complete set of residues, etc. And uh, this one, with one example, I will say, you say 42, 23, 7 is a complete system of residues, residence, typing error, residues mod 3. All right. Why it is said complete system of residues mod 3? You see, look at that 42. It is congruent to 0. 7 is congruent to 1. 23 is congruent to 2. Under mod 3, you have got 0, 1 and 2. Two. So, all three are there and therefore, the set 42, 23, 7 is called complete system of residues, not remainders. Whereas, 0, 1, 3, sorry, 0, 1, 2 are set of complete set of remainders when you divide by 3, right. Then, congruent modulo n is an equivalence relation, all these are properties, right. I have the, I, I have the urge to write something when I see some of this, but I can't. I can't because I cannot locate the, uh, the pen dot there. Anyway, so these are the ones. You can raise power. You can add any constant to both sides of a congruence. If you have two congruences in the same mod n, then you can add them, etc. And this is very wonderful one. You cannot cancel a common factor immediately. All right. You cannot cancel a common factor immediately. Uh, all right, you need to have a rule there as it's seen here. All right, okay. Now, can you work out this one? Start. That's why I, I, I requested you to bring through Madam pen and uh, paper. So, work out this one. What is the remainder when 41 power 65 is divided by 7? Look at it this way. This 41, all right, 41, you know 42 is a multiple of 7, 0 mod 7, all right. So, 41, 41 is congruent to minus 1 mod 7, all right, and therefore 41 to the power of 65 is congruent to minus 1 to the power of 65 mod 7. In other words, it is minus 1 mod 7. How do you make it positive? Add 40, 41. So, it, uh, no, add 7, isn't it? So, you will get it as 6 mod 7. So, 6 is the remainder, all right, when 41 power 65 is divided by 7. I think you have used a lot of calculator. I was seeing there. Anyway, right. So, we will go to the next one. So, now we are going for linear congruence. Look at that linear congruence, Ax congruent to B mod n and it has a solution only when the GCD of A and n, that is here, yeah, look at this, GCD of A and n that divides B, that divides B, alright. And uh, if that divides B, then the congruence has D incongruent, mutually incongruent solutions, 
mutually incongruent solutions. And then here 3x, this has a solution, you can verify 3x congruent to 4 mod 7, when you put x is equal to say 1, 2, 3 like that, you can go on, but somebody can easily get it using a theorem where this 3 into something must be 1, 3 multiplied by something must be 1. Now, when I say equal to 1, 3 into nothing can be 1 in integers, you know, but I am talking about mod 7, mod 7. All right, 3 into what is congruent to 1 mod 7? 3 into 5. 15 is congruent to 1 mod 7. So multiply it by 5. So you get 15x congruent to 20 mod 7. Multiplying both sides by 5. And then you will get x congruent to 20 is congruent to what mod 7? 6 mod 7. So you get solution as 6. So this is how we can solve linear congruences easily. And then another one, 2x congruent to 3 mod 8, all right. There, again, you can find the solution here, 2 and 8, you know, look at that 2 and 8. The GCD is, GCD is 2 and that 2 does not divide 3. Therefore, this congruence has no solution. Somebody would have gone on verifying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 7 to check whether there is a solution and conclude at the end there is no solution. But instead you can verify with the condition there. Now 4x congruent to 2 mod 6. I don't know why that not congruent has come there. Anyway, so when you put x is equal to what, what you can do here to find the solution is uh, you take uh, multiplied by 2. So 8x congruent to 4 mod 6. Now look at it. This 8, um, no, okay. No, you go on verifying otherwise. Put x is equal to 2. Yes, put x is equal to 2. You have a solution there, right? 8 is congruent to 2. Don't re that remove that. It's, it, it is congruent. Cancelling is not correct there. Then again, when you put x is equal to 5, what do you get? 20 is congruent to 2 mod 6. There are two solutions. And these two solutions are incongruent. When I took this one, we got x is equal to 5 is a solution. Correct? No? What was the solution there? 5, 15 congruent to 20. So x is equal to 6 was a solution. X, was, x equal to 6 is a solution. Therefore, x is equal to 13 is also a solution. x is equal to 20 is also a solution. But all of them are congruent mod 7 to each other. Whereas here, we have got two solutions, they are not congruent mod 6 under this one. So that is what the theorem said that if D divides B, then it has D mutually incongruent solutions, incongruent solutions, right. So I want to skip quite a bit now. Pythagoras, you see some books, number theory books to do that. All these are primitive Pythagorean triplets, etc., etc. And about some more mathematicians. Uh, Fermat's little theorem, okay, I do not require it, I require Fermat's Euler's theorem, okay, find the remainder, I would have given some more questions, but right now it is not possible because it is getting time, so uh, this is a beautiful result, Chinese had this for uh, I think 2500 years. Uh, uh, they, have, they were to say that if n divides 2 to the power of n minus 2, if and only if n is a prime, you know. This theorem, Gauss used this theorem to prove that this result fails. He proved that 341 divides 2 to the power of 341 minus 2 and then, but 341 is not a prime. It is a composite. 341 is 31 into 11. So, to prove this, there were no computers then, no calculators, no computers. He used his, these congruences introduced by him. He proved that 2 to the power of 31 is congruent to 1 mod 11 and 2 to the power of uh, 11 is congruent to 1 mod 31 and therefore, 2 to the power of 31 into 11 is congruent to 1 mod as you see here. What is that here? This he used that result to prove this, all right. And therefore, the two things happened then. 
One is that people were trying to find out whether the converse of Fermat's little theorem is true. And they came to know with this result that Fermat's little theorem's converse fails. And also 341 is the first such number. And also this one, that is uh, the Chinese conjecture, which was there for how many years? 2,500 years, I said, that also failed. All right? Then we'll go ahead. All this is, I would have proved and shown. Now, we want this Euler's phi function. All right? Phi, how to find, uh, how to evaluate phi of uh, 105. So, you factorize that 105. Or do you have some prime factors? 105 is, uh, you know, it is uh, 5. How much is that? Uh, 21 into 5, is it? Correct, no? 21 into 5. And 21 is 7 into 3 into 5. And what is 5 of that? 5 of that will be uh, 6 into 2 into 4. So, how much you will get? Isn't 48. So, 5 of 105 is 48. So, yeah, yeah, okay. 5 of 100 is 40. I have worked it out there. You can see. Another problem there, 3 power 40 is congruent to 1 mod 100. Why is that? That is Euler's theorem, right? That's Euler's theorem. So, here for this, this 40 is 5 of 100. You know, that's what a to the power of 5 of n is congruent to 1 mod n. Alright, so an example for 5 Euler's theorem. As you see at the top, that is Euler's theorem. Alright. I require Euler's theorem to uh, actually take RSA, that's a cryptography. Now let me, uh, we start with this. Shall I skip some of those uh, initial cryptographies which were given by uh, Julius Caesar and all that? That's only to write something. I wanted this as a problem for you to work, but no time there. So you have to write letters, three letters below or up. Like instead of writing uh, say C or instead of writing D, you write A in the message. So like that three letters below or three letters above, that's what Julius Caesar did, which is highly insecure because if you sit for some time, you can make out what is the, uh, the uh, idea used there. So yeah, yeah, all this, all these definitions, I think Dennis sir, told a few of them, so I don't require to repeat. Now, these are other mathematicians who have done uh, uh, French cryptographer and all those. They were all, okay, this is a nice thing, I'll explain if I have got, yeah, it is there. Okay, so look at this, what we do is, you take the name, this ready, and J is the seed, what, do you, what is meant by seed? Seed is, its number is 9. J is 9, okay. A is taken as 0 there and uh, Z is taken as 25. So, J comes as uh, I think 9. So, below R is 17, E is 4, A is 0, D is 3, Y is 20 and below that you write here 9. 9 is J, that is called C, okay, that is called C. Then you repeat this, 17, 4, 0, 3, all that you repeat, all right. Any, any big, any big word that you have to send, you write like this and add up. So it is 17 plus 9 under mod 26 it is. 17 plus 9 is 26, so it is congruent to 0 mod 6. And then 4 plus 17 is 21. So 0 means A, 21 means V, 4 similarly is E and like that you do. And send this word, this word is sent to the, as the uh, secret word. And then they recast it. So these are called PIs. P1 is 17, P2 is 4, P3 is 0, like that. And CIs are this C1 is A, C2 is V, etc. And then see it, how it is done. So P1 is uh, P1 minus P1 is C1 minus J. C1 minus J it is. Okay. And uh, similarly, P2. So it is uh, 17. So you can recover the uh, plain text like this, you know. Yeah. So anyway, here K is the seed, etc. Let's not spend time over it. We'll go to the main one. Uh, yeah, this you can just see. 
factorization of primes. This uh, main one that I am taking which uh, remained as a very good crypto system for many years is RSA. I am trying to keep you that, give you that RSA, alright. So, just, what was there? Ah, yeah, here it is, see. Uh, RSA, uh, R is for Rivest and uh, S is for Adi Shamil and then Leonard Adelman, okay. They were the ones who uh, invented this and uh, it depends on two huge primes and a little later I will show you that uh, primes are there of very huge uh, nature. So, P and Q are huge primes, their product N is known and uh, that is PQ, around 400 digits it will be and phi of n as I have already said uh, it is phi of p minus 1 q minus 1 as p and q are primes alright. So, take k such that k is uh, between 1 and phi of n and then you keep this k you know with gcd must be 1 that is all k must be selected but gcd must be 1 then this is important this n it is n comma ok, n comma k is placed as a public domain. Now, how do I say that? You know uh, earlier a few years back you must have seen some of you when you were small there was a telephone directory you know like that there used to be a directory of uh, public key. So, these two numbers were kept under say it is mine then I keep that n and k under my name and it is published everybody knows that n and k whoever wants to send me a secret message will use that n and k and send the message. Now, how to continue with that here? Yeah. Um, a block less than n is converted calculating m power k congruent to r mod n. This is a huge work alright. I am uh, I am taking a simple example m power k equal congruent to r mod n and then you you are sending that r you are sending that r m is the uh, big something like that no, just now we had ready, all right. This ready you write in a, uh, the, its a, a dig digital equivalence. For example, I said A is 0, 0, E is what? E is 0, 4, 0, 5, okay, 0, 5, D is 0, 4, like that. You know, you make the digital equivalent and take that digital equivalent, whatever you have, as M and raise power K in that that can be done only by a computer, there are algorithms to do that and congruent to R mod n and you send that R. And now how to uh, revive the original message is given here that is M, uh, yeah. So, there is a J between 1 and 5 of n for this K, that K that is used here, there is a J such that K into J, K into J is congruent to 1 mod phi of n. In other words, k into j minus phi of n into t is 1, alright. So, next. So, you take that r and raise power j on that, r to the power of the message that you have got, raise power j on that and here is the uh, theorem that is used, say it is not properly done there, m to the power of phi of n is 1, is not it? m to the power of phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n. So, because of that you get back m, alright, m is this is all power there, it has come down, alright. So, that is how it happens. Now, I will take an example then it becomes easy, alright. So, uh, look at the numbers, twin primes, yeah. Now, we will take this one. Uh, you have p equal to 7, q equal to 11, pq is 77, alright, that is n. And then you take a number, what is, what is the phi of n? Phi of n is 6 into, what happened? Oh, again gone. Ah, it came, it came, it came. It came yeah. So, phi of n is 6 into 10, 60, alright. So, uh, I have to select a number k which is and 60, they must be relatively prime, k and 60 must be relatively prime, select such a k and that is I have taken it as 43, 43, I am taking 43 and 77 not 7, 
77 is yen for us, you see, that yen. 4377 is given in the public domain and say 7 into 43 is congruent to 1 mod n. Is ch just check and see, okay. This is j, this is 77 there and this is j, okay. This is k. So, 7 into 43 is congruent to 1 mod phi of n. Now, when a, when a message is sent as m, to be sent as m, you raise it power 43 and that is congruent to r, then r is raised to power j, that is m, that is m, alright. So, see we will take an example like j is 7, okay. So, we are taking d as the plain text, as I said we require a computer to do the calculations. So, I am taking just d and therefore, its uh, digital equivalence is 3 and then you raise power k on that, that will be 0, 3, power 43 and that 43 when you reduce, I would have worked out that, uh, you get congruent to 38 mod 77, I require 4 or 5 lines for that, 3 to the power of 43 is congruent, Do anybody has that uh, uh, algorithm uh, of reducing, that would have been nice, but anyway. Otherwise, we have to calculate. I, I can do that calculation anyway. Uh, then next, so we are sending this uh, 38 as instead of sending D, we are sending 38. The receiver receives 38 and then he raises power J on that, <coughs> that is power 7 and 38 power 7 is congruent to 3 mod 7 and that 3 is D. So, he gets back that D, right. Now the calculations, how the calculations were done, I hope they are there. So 3 to the power of 7, just see it is 2187 is congruent to 31 and then I have to take 3 to the power of, my aim is to go for 3 to the power of 43, alright. So 3 to the power of 7 is 31 <coughs> and then how, how it is reduced, uh, you have here, so 77's multiple is here, right. So this is uh, 2187, look at the difference that is 31. So, 3 power 7 is 31 mod 77 and then 3 power 8 is 16, that is you multiply this by 3, 31 into 3 is 16, 16 in the sense, congruent to 16 mod 7 and then you, 3 power 9 will be 48, as you multiply this by 3, you get 48 and then 3 power 10 will be minus 10. 3 power 10 is minus 10, then you raise at once the power 3 power 40 and uh, that will be minus 10 to the power of 40 which will be <coughs> 10,000, right? So, 3 to the power of 40 is 10,000 under mod 77 and that 10,000 is reduced as minus 10 again under mod 77, it is not mod 7, mod 77, alright? Because, uh, 77 multiplied by 130 becomes 10,010. So, it is minus 10 and then 3 to the power of 43 is 38. So, that is how you get 38 and you are sending that 38. The receiver after receiving that 38 has to raise power 7 over it because j is 7. So, 38 square is minus 19 and uh, 38 cube is 48. 38 power 6 is minus 6 and 38 power 7 is 3 and that is how you get back that 3, right. So, that is the RSA that we have and uh, nowadays the uh, the cryptography has gone into elliptic curve crypto cryptography, a, a system that is very complicated. You require a lot of number theory for that and uh, research is still going on. People are uh, doing a lot of work in uh, crypto systems and therefore because of that new methods are being brought in and uh, this RSA is highly secure because it depends on huge primes, huge primes and uh, factorizing takes hours, not hours, they say years and uh, some calculation was there uh, in a, a book that uh, it takes around 40 years to factorize a prime of the level of 400 digits. I mean a composite having product of two primes uh, which is of about 400 digits and uh, therefore, but then uh, with the algorithms, new algorithms and uh, 
putting the computers together with all that you know it can be done much faster maybe now it can be done faster however it cannot be done within a few minutes that may not be possible and maybe in future that also is uh, uh, such algorithms may be available in future and uh, therefore new things are been uh, found out one thing that we see is that this uh, strong primes you know they are well known to people therefore uh, people have a list of primes they may go on verifying this huge primes whether they are the factors of the n the key the key k and n is in the public and that n factors are p and q those p and q you know people have big list of p and q p's primes huge primes and then they can go on verifying which is a factor and immediately they can find the other factor that can be in that can be a little dangerous for this rsa but for that it, it is found to be if you go on inventing new and new primes of higher order then i think that that was a very safe one but uh, elliptic curve cryptography we cannot do it here unless you know a little more we had in pg you know we had in pg cryptography one paper was there and their elliptic curve cryptography system i've thought there but i i don't know uh, presently it is not there as a paper right yeah anyway so with that i end i have skipped a lot i think i, I must have taken at least one and a half hours to do the whole thing anyway doesn't matter okay thank you very much